This is your alien teacher with yet another technical drawings and engineering graphics and design tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to continue to explain the interpenetration. And this is part three and the last tutorial in this discussion. And we're going to do the development of the main pipe. Here we see the overall picture of the complete layout of the answer. So we have now the top view provided to us with the half cylinder seen from the top, as well as the penetrating prism that will then penetrate the top view. And then at the front view, we can see that the prism that penetrates the half cylinder is slanted at an angle. And in this case, it is a 30 degree angle. So we've discussed this interpenetration now in part one of this tutorial series. And then in the second tutorial of the series, we discussed the development of the penetrating prism and how we determined the full layout of that development. And in today's lesson, we're going to do the development of the main pipe. And I hope you enjoy this session. So now we can do the development of the main pipe in the open space of our page. And therefore, we can take the base of our main pipe and draw a light construction line across to the open space. And because uh, the development can be used 90 degrees and projected out from the main pipe on the heights as we see them here, we can now also take the height of the main pipe and project it out to the open space. Now we can draw a vertical line to start the beginning of our development at any random place as long as we have enough space open to the right hand side where we want to do the development. Now from here we need to de determine the length of the development and because this is a half cylinder we will now have the formula that we use to determine the length of a development which is pi times diameter but uh, this is not a full circle, therefore we are going to divide the diameter by 2 and then the 60 divided by 2 will give us a length or a, a radius of 30 millimeters for this uh, development and we only need 6 segments and therefore we will have the full development length over these seg 6 segments as 94.25 millimeters. Therefore we can now draw a light construction line at the 94.25 millimeters on the baseline of our development and then draw in the solid line for the base of the development, the edge on the left, the right and the top of our development. So what we need to do once we have the height and length of our development is draw a grid onto this de development with the six segments that represent uh, the intervals on which we will determine the heights of each of the individual points of our penetrating pipe. Now what we need to do is firstly draw a light construction line at any angle from the beginning of development and we're going to divide this diagonal line into six equal segments to represent each one of the intervals on the half cylinder and what we do is I'm just going to take more or less 10 millimeters and space out six of those uh, segments onto the development as you can see here. Once we've done this we can now draw the vertical grid that will project straight down now from each one of those intervals onto the development itself. This will represent now six equal segments for each of the intervals on our half cylinder. Once we have divided the development into its six equal segments, what we need to do is label now each one of these segments on the baseline. These will now represent what we have of uh, the individual points that we are going to translate now from the front view onto our grid. Now we also need to make use of our top view in this case to determine where each one of these uh, points will be uh, projected from. So here is a close-up of the top view. 
where we can see each one of the labels. And I have now added the a few labels that we did not have yet in our previous uh, tutorials, so part one and two, because I've indicated them in blue and we only needed them now for the development of the main pipe. Now, number one was already used. We just added the label for number one here, but we can see that we already had A, B, C, and we also had number four, which now I just labeled D as well. So what I've also done is just started with G before A, because as you can see, we have now his D, E, F all the way to the top, and then I just placed G. The naming of these labels is up to you, so whichever label preference you have, you may use. What we need to do now, once we have transferred all the labels over to our uh, main pipes development, we need to now determine the distance from point C to number one, because on our development, you would see that we have a uh, interval for C and B, but not for number one. So therefore here on our top, we, we need to take our divider, or you can use your compass and place it at point C and stretch it to uh, number one in the direction of B. You could also have done the same from interval B in the direction of C to the distance of number one. That's your preference. So I'm going to use now from C in the direction of B and use the distance from C to one, which I measure with my compass on my top view. Now here on my development, you can see a close up of the segments. And where we have B and C now, I now need to take the measurement that I took from the top view, place my compass, as you can see here, from a C to 1. And then I'm going to place my compass at C and measure the distance from C on the baseline in the direction of B using the measurement that I copied over from my top view. So here, just to show you again that uh, we want to label this now as number one. And that correlates then with the measurement that we took from the top view from C in the direction of B. Now, with all the views in place, we want to make sure that we then, as we have determined, say that we have number one here between C in the direction of uh, B. And then we're going to draw a light construction line to show the positioning of number one in between the intervals of B and C. And we just check on our top view to correlate that, in fact, we have done uh, the projection at the right place. Now, with all our vertical intervals sorted, we now need to take the heights from our front view and project them across to the development. So we're going to start by drawing just light construction lines all the way, and I'm doing it from the top downwards. You can do it from the bottom upwards. It's your preference. And then I'm going to just draw each label's height across at an angle of zero degrees onto our development, as you can see here. We need to make sure that we are working accurate because on paper these lines will be very close to one another and you must make sure that your board ruler does not shift as you do these projections. Now that we have determined the horizontal and vertical grit on our development, we can now carry over all the numbers and dots from our front view's height across onto our development. So we will start with number one and place number one at the vertical interval of number one. So at this stage, it's very important to make sure that your height and the uh, vertical interval is in fact at the right position. And then you will carry on labeling each one of the other labels. Now I'm doing it from the top down. You could have done it from the bottom up. It does not matter. Just make sure that your horizontal and your vertical intersections are at the right place. So here at number four, I just want to make sure that you understand that four could have been called D or D could have been called four on the vertical interval. And if you look at your top view, you will see that I have now number four 
transfer to uh, point D on the cylinder and uh, uh, it is just important to note that you can label these whichever preference you have. I just did it so that you can see now that I have used these letters on the cylinder so that uh, D would be a vertical interval and then I could correlate it with number four of the height. But you, as I said, could have known uh, it either four or D, whichever is your preference. And then we'll carry on labeling A. And you will see A and A1 falls both on a vertical interval of A and uh, they are just at different heights which we will then determine from what we've done in part uh, one of our tutorial series on the interpenetration. And we carry on with C1 and do the rest of our labels and we end up with number three at the bottom. And it's also important to note if you look at your top view that number three and number one are at the same uh, penetrating point on the cylinder or the edge of the cylinder and therefore you will draw them both on the interval which in this case would have been number one okay just number three is at the bottom and number one at the top and now before we do the curve and draw in the curve with our free hand very neatly or in other words we can also use our french curve or flexi curve to draw a curve i would just want to make sure that uh, the curvature that i get from the points do in fact give me the arcs that I would expect if I look at the information from my front and my top view and in this case you can see that it makes a nice curvature from number one all the three the way to G and then from G to three from three through C1 to four and from four back through C to number one and uh, this we will definitely do with a a flexi curve or with a French curve, whichever you prefer, or if you are very good with freehand drawing, you can draw in that curvature with your free hand. So now we will carry on and we will draw in the curvature, and it is nice to use more or less three points across uh, the face of your flexi curve or your French curve, and then uh, move along the French curve or flexi curve, whichever you use, so that you could get more or less the right curvature over the spread of three points, as you can see I've done here. And you can see that from one to C and four, it's almost a, a straight line that it forms, but just keep in mind that it is not a straight line. It just appears to be because this is a curved cylinder, so or a curved edge of a cylinder, and therefore please remember that uh, the lines do not connect solid with one another but in fact do have a curve as you can see here and now we have a nice layout of our uh, hole that we find on our development and remember this must be drawn in with solid lines that then brings us to the end of part three of this interpenetration tutorial and this is the last uh, tutorial of this series. So I thank you for watching. If you do like these videos, please like them on my YouTube channel. Subscribe and I hope to be making a lot more video tutorials. It's for educational purposes and I hope that uh, you can benefit from these tutorials. Thank you for watching.